Bunch formations. What are they? Why do teams use them? And why do they work so well? Coming up right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski. Today, I want to talk to you about bunch formations. As a young quarterback, oftentimes, when your offensive coordinator, your head coach, whoever's in charge of your offense, starts putting in new formations, new looks that seem really exotic, it gets intense. It gets intimidating. It seems like there is a lot to figure out. Today, I'm going to talk about bunch formations, why you use them, what they do for you as an offense, and how, as a quarterback, you should think about them conceptually. But first, before we get started, if you haven't done it yet, and you love football content, you love talking X's and O's, you love hearing about college football, the great players in the games, the great offenses, the schemes, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. We have all kinds of football content coming out here. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to talk about bunch formations, how they affect you in your offense, or if you're a fan, why your favorite team is using them. And leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you, your thoughts, anything you want to hear about. I'd love to make a video. And finally, make sure you share this video out. We're trying to help young athletes across the country get better at their sports. That's our goal at EliteAthletesTV.com. We develop instructional content, informational content to help young athletes improve at their game. And so the more you can share this out, the more people you expose us to, the more young athletes can benefit. Now, let's talk about the bunch package. So why do teams use bunch package? Obviously, for years and years and years, football had standard formations. Wide receivers split out. Maybe you had a slot in the game. You're an 11 personnel. Maybe you had two backs, tight end, split, no tight end in the game, but you use a slot instead. And so you had all these standard formations that were traditional in football. What they did in those formations is they tried to attack the vertical passing game. And so in the vertical passing game, you're trying to take advantage of holes in zones. Same idea with man. Vertical passing game outside, Air Coryell, let's go down the field. Daryl LaMonica, a huge proponent of the vertical passing game. Daryl's a good friend of mine. We talk about it. He loved throwing that ball down the field. That's why they called him the Mad Bomber. Along comes Bill Walsh. I'll talk more about the West Coast offense and the origins later, but he develops a West Coast offense. Now, instead of this big vertical passing game, we're trying to break off small chunks within the passing game. A four-yard reception is just as good as a four-yard run. And so it makes defenses cover more space. Then you start bringing in new pieces to that offense, the bunch package, getting three receivers together in space. What is it? Well, here's a look. By putting three receivers stacked on top of each other, in the bunch, this is it right here, what you do is you create space. You take these three receivers, and rather than having a slot in here or a slot in here, now you've put them all in one space. Defense has to react correspondingly. And so you're going to have to have a player with outside leverage. You're going to have to have a player with some sort of inside or over-the-top leverage, and another player down low to try to defend that bunch package. So by taking these three receivers, splitting them out, putting them all together, you create space. What does that mean? Well, by creating space here, putting these th receivers out in space, you're making this safety in this cover two look cover the half of the field against three guys. You have three on three, but this guy has his half. This guy has his flat. This guy is the underneath player. You can attack any of these individual players with two out of the bunch package. So for instance, let's say you decide you're going to run a scissors concept here. So I'm going to hold that corner and I'm going to run a corner route here and a post route here. Well, that puts this safety in a huge bind. Does he take the corner, in which case this is a hole shot, or does he stay deep middle, in which case you've got that corner route. Now, if this corner were to drop deep, now you've got the flat. So see, by attacking one or two separate zones from that bunch look, you're taking advantage of numbers in space. Now we've got this bunch tight look. You can see we took this trio of receivers and we moved them from out here inside. Well, what does that do? A, it packs the box. It gets everybody inside here. So you've got a lot of defenders inside, but... It gives receivers room to make a move. Think about it. On the big field, if you're a single receiver, let's say you're this guy, the L in this case, and you're out here with the corner over you, 
that corner has the extra help of the sideline. And then on the inside, he has some help from the safety. And so if he plays you tight inside leverage, tries to force you to the corner, it makes tight little windows for quarterbacks to try to throw that football into. But now when we compress or shrink this formation, all of these receivers have a two-way go. Y can go inside, he can go vertical, he can go vertical angular, he can go outside, and the same goes for every receiver. You can go outside, vertical, angular, inside. You have every single option. One of the hardest things to do in football is to cover man-to-man. If you can use the sideline to your advantage, that helps. But once you compress these formations, now all four receivers have a two-way go, and that is tough to cover. Once again, by compressing the formation, we're creating space. You have all this extra space to expand to by receivers, but you're also creating leverage. What do I mean by leverage? Let's drop that same route we just drew up before. Let's say we go with a shoot route. Well, this corner has to expand right now to cover that shoot route. Now we run vertical post and corner scissors route again. And that you can see I changed men. So that's our next point. We'll get to that. Now, if this corner expands, this backer in zone is going to settle about 12 yards. Now, once again, you've got a one-on-one -on -one high with that safety. So you've created space. And not only that, if you decide you're going to throw this ball and safety comes over the top, you can still flatten this ball to the outside because you have a lot more space to throw that ball into. So by compressing the formation away from the sidelines, You've created a ton of open space, and you've created leverage. This corner, who's used to playing out here on the sideline, now has to cover all this, and you can leverage him really quickly. Any kind of out route from these guys will leverage him right now. A stop route in front of him will leverage him right now. So anything that you do on that outside corner, you leverage him and leave yourself a bunch of room. Another style of route that you could run, again, using that leverage, you could run a shoot route with a bench route and a seam. Now you're stretching this corner because you have a high low out here and you're stretching this safety because you have a vertical route getting through his zone with a bench route on top. Now this is not his area to cover, but if he wants to jump that out route because it's coming at him first, now you get this vertical shot going through for the big score. So that's versus zone. We've seen it in the wide field, we've seen it compressed. Now let's talk about man, and we'll take a look at a couple different man concepts, but this is when it gets really fun when we're talking about bunch packages. Now, now we're talking. Bunch versus man. How can I tell it's man? Well, single safety high, corner, trying to force this inside, so he's going to potentially take that outside leverage here. You have a backer up again, in this case backer, could be a nickel guy here but you've got a backer up pressed. Generally speaking, when teams are playing man against bunch formations, they're going to play it at different levels. They will have the man on the line of scrimmage, in this case the Y, with a press, trying to disrupt that route, trying to reroute and create bad timing for an offense. They will have the inside guy higher and inside, and the outside guy off and outside, because they feel like they have help from the middle of the field. What this safety doesn't want is to get beat across his face right now because he doesn't have help coming across from that backside unless they have a backer free up. Now, the problem with running man against bunch coverage is it presents an opportunity to create all kinds of rubs. For instance, if you're going to play just straight man, say you're going to lock it up, run man. Well, if I'm this Y receiver, I can come and sit down in this zone post over the top, run the shoot. When this corner leaves, you have a rub because picks are illegal. He can't get there. That's an automatic for a quarterback. And that's just super simple pass route running here. What if we do that same thing where we run the corner route on the outside, a shoot from the inside and the wheel? Well, now you've got these guys again. This is just straight man, conceptually speaking. This backer and this Y running vertically through the zone as this safety is trying to cross here and this corner is trying to come underneath to cover that. It could be either a vertical seam or a sit down of some type. So you get all kinds of 
confusion inside here if you just play straight man. Teams tried that for a while. Very difficult to do. You set yourself up to being picked. Let's take a look at one more pick. What if we get post, vertical, crosser, and now tailback on the shoot? This backer has to fight through all of this to be able to cover that back in man. So if you're going to play straight man against bunch, you leave yourself open to getting picked somewhere in the play. Now, what a lot of teams have done is they have played combo coverage. And again, versus bunch, eventually it ends up being man anyway when guys declare where they're going to go with routes. What that means is this corner or outside defender will take the first outside breaking route. This safety or nickel defender, whoever it is, will take the first inside or vertical breaking route. And this guy will take the underneath or the flat route, shoot route. However they decide to zone it off, they're going to use some kind of combo where these three take these three depending on where they go. So for instance, in a combo coverage, if the Y runs a quick shoot, the corner jumps him. Now it leaves these two guys to cover these two guys. So Y quick shoot, corner jumps him. What if we now get vertical push with a dig? Well, safety should have him coming inside, which leaves last remaining receiver alone on the backer, nickel defender, whoever that may be. If you threaten their zone right now, they'll jump you. So if you were to get a route, something like cross, vertical, shoot, you would get safety, backer, corner, right? Backers here, safety here. And again, this is all hypothetical because... When you're playing combo coverage, it's all about what declares first. They have rules for what comes at them. Now, versus that combo coverage, though, you can once again use those same zone concepts that you used before to beat defense. If I run quick flat right now, corner jumps me, that leaves my backer or my nickel player one-on-one -on -one versus my Y, which means I can run corner, I can run out, I can run vertical, as long as I occupy this inside defender, he's one-on-one -on -one here. He leaves this safety and this safety inside to cover that inside breaking route. And so you get that kind of matchup, which is the last thing that Bunch gives you. Due to the confusion on defense, you can find a way to get to matchups. You could do it from a set Bunch like this, or you could take this, this F player here and you could motion him over. Now... The safety would start here and motion over as well. He's now thrown into the mix of three on three. And so by using motions, by using formation, by using the bunch package, you create mismatches, you create space, and you create leverage. There are about a million different bunch plays that I could draw up for you. They also create a lot of leverage, a lot of mismatches, a lot of personnel issues in the run game. So I'm not going to drop all those plays. I just wanted you to understand that when teams are going to bunch, they're trying to create space, they're trying to create leverage, they're trying to create confusion, and they're trying to create mismatches. You can do it in the pass game or the run game, but that's what the bunch package is all about. It's a great tool to use in your offense if you're a young quarterback. Don't get confused. Don't be intimidated. The bunch package is awesome, and once you understand what you're trying to accomplish with each play, it gets pretty clean pretty quick. If you like what I did today, if you love the X's and O's, make sure you subscribe to the channel ring that bell. That way you get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. Give me a thumbs up. If you understand more how to use the bunch package in your passing game, also leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you what you thought about today's video or about any of the other videos on the channel or what you'd like to see from us here at EliteAthletesTV.com. And don't forget to share this video out. I appreciate you watching, trying to help you with a little bit of quarterback training, improve your football skills, improve your football knowledge, and hopefully make you a better player.